was thinking about that it's time that the church of Jesus Christ is purified. It's time that those that profess the name of Christ, like it says, everyone that names the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. It is time that the church of Jesus Christ is purified from sin, from wickedness. But we must define what is the church of Jesus Christ because it's not a building, it's not a group, it is the blood bought children of God, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, redeemed by his power, set free by the Holy Spirit. This is the church. It is high time that we are not desensitized by the lie that one can be a Christian and not be a new creature. That we're desensitized to think that a life of sin is what Jesus Christ meant by you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Or when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. This is what he meant by the conviction of sin. That there is a new life found in Jesus Christ. It is not that what we do for God, it is not even our love for God, but that he first loved us and that he gave himself for us as a sacrifice, as an offering, holy and acceptable. But it's that we should know that it was our sin that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. It was our wickedness. And how shall we hold on to our sin when it was our own wickedness that nailed Jesus Christ to the cross? It was not the Romans, it was for us that he died. Like he said, I lay down my life for the sheep. It was the sins of the church. And it's high time that the church be purified from all form of wickedness, of ungodliness. As it says in Corinthians, that I hear it's reportedly among you that there is fornication commonly among you. But he says, put out that wicked person from among you, from among yourselves, that you may be a new love. It is time that the church of Jesus Christ be without spot, without wrinkle. This is the church that Jesus Christ returns for, one that is holy. As it says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him from the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto adoption by Jesus Christ unto himself, but that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes, every man that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It is true that Jesus Christ has not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yea, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. You're in need of this changed heart. You're in need to be set free. And once having been set free, that you again seek to be entangled into those weak and beggarly elements in which you seek to be in bondage. It's time that we cast off every sin that so easily ensnares and besets us. Every besetting sin, every form of ungodliness, every... I mean, do we not fear the Word of God? Do we not fear the Scriptures, what God says? But He says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, saith the Lord, shall not pass away. Or again, he that doeth the will of God abides forever abides forever. But the earth and all its works shall be burned up with fervent heat. He that does the will of God abides forever. Are you doing the will of God? Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Again, all that is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the eyes of the Lord. This is what the Word of God says. What man seeks out for himself, like it says that man was made upright, but he seeks out many evil inventions. Many evil inventions. Jesus said, he that looks on a woman to lust after her, 
has committed adultery already with her in his heart. He that hates his brother is a murderer, and you know no murderer has eternal life in him. Or again in Proverbs when he says, Depart from a man when you discern in him not the lips of iniquity. No. But we don't. In 2 John verse 8 when he says, Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. Whoso abides in the doctrine, he has both the Father and the Son, but the warning, if there comes any unto you and brings not this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. He that bids him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. They share in wickedness, those that assist preachers of a false gospel of another Jesus and not the salvation that is breathed in the Word of God. So we can act that it's a grace that is a lawlessness and ungodliness. That the children of God being set free by the grace of God live in ungodliness. Live in rebellion. No, they've been given a word to follow to save them. Because true religion is this, to visit the afflicted, the poor, the widows, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And yet we live in the world, focus on worldly things, partake of those that are lifters up of idols. No, it is the sins of the church at which God is grieved. As a wife treacherously departs from her husband, it says. No, this is the word from the Lord. The Lord is angry with his people. That the Lord is angry with his people because they've departed from the rivers of living waters. And they've hewn for themselves out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. They search for peace in another way. They search for comfort in another way. They seek to be pleasing unto God and yet be pleasing to the world. No, whosoever makes himself a friend of the world is the enemy of God. They make themselves the enemy of God. So there is a word that we must follow. There is a righteousness that is worked out in the hearts of those that have been set free. Like he says, I will put a new spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. If while we preach Christ or grace, we are yet found sinners, that we again build that for which we once sought to destroy. No, but the purifying of the church of Jesus Christ is the utmost importance. That it no longer continue in darkness, or like children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, that they are no longer partakers, freely given over to lusts, but that they are delivered from their former lusts, just like the scripture says, that they are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light. Do you walk in the light as he is in the light? There's no cause of stumbling for you. But if you stumble, know that Jesus Christ can make you whole. You can be made whole. Except you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be made whole. As many as have touched the hem of his garment were made perfectly whole. And yet they preach unto you the freedom of the will, the power of man to justify himself. Both are false. Both are false. That a man can be saved and live in lawlessness. Like the Lord had never given us a word to follow. That a man could live without guilt of conscience. Now, this is the work of one whose conscience is seared with a hot iron. Seared with a hot iron. And the Lord has set his seal to this. The Lord knows them that are his. Them that are his. And he will have for himself a church without spot, without wrinkle. As a bride adorned for her husband. He will have her to be purified. 
He will have his church to be saved, despite what grievous wolves that have risen up do or say. But the time has come that we look to ourselves, that we look circumspectly, because the days are evil, says the Lord, that you walk is one in which you are watching all around you. The days are evil. Yes, it is true. Everything that God has said about man is true. The fact that man hates Jesus Christ, the fact that man hates the Word of God, proves when God says they hated me without a cause. The one who's come to heal us, to heal the brokenhearted, those that are crushed in spirit, to set them free, to open the eyes of the blind, yet they hate him. They crucify him when he made a man whole on the Sabbath day. They sought to kill him. 